I'd like to start a little bit with just really understanding what we mean when we talk about diversity, equity and inclusion, because certainly I've heard those words banded around. Um, sometimes they seem to mean very much something around gender. Sometimes um, equity was kind of a, a newish word to me. It was always diversity and inclusion. So there's lots of things in my mind. I don't even necessarily fully understand what we mean when we're talking about those three things. So um, I wondered if um, perhaps Sabah, could, could you maybe break them down for me in terms of what each of those things refer to? Um, yeah, sure. I'll uh, share what it means to me. It might yeah. be that other people have different definitions or understand it differently. Um, for me, equity is the link between embracing diversity and creating inclusion. Because without understanding the nuances of why equality does not equate to equity, which is, you know, you need everybody starts at different points, everybody starts with different barriers. Um, and so you have to have a very nuanced understanding of equity creation. And I think for me, it is making sure that we are listening and doing work, reflecting all those nuances and making sure we're creating those spaces for different people where diversity can thrive and therefore where people feel belong, like they belong. And so therefore they feel included. So that's how those three concepts okay. relate. Me. So diversity is very much lots of different people is, is what we're kind of referring to. I think diversity is everything. Diversity is natural. Diversity is not just all our multiple complex identities, but diversity is um, how we think, how we act, how we behave, what we believe, where we're from. And, you know, it's the mix of all of this that we bring to ourselves, whether we engage in society, socially, at workplace and so on. So diversity is all those unique to create these kind of spaces even. It's, you know, when I'm talking, I'm not assuming that uh, and Leon no. think me and they agree and space for disagreement. So for me, diversity is accepting that difference is natural, it's normal, and it's non-binary. Okay. okay. How, how is it defined at ABB? Because I assume, Heidi, that you define what diversity and inclusion and diversity, equity and inclusion is there. How, how do you define it there? Yeah, and I think it's it's uh, very often, you know, diversity and inclusion, most people understand what that is. So diversity, the, more of the demographics. So you have the gender, you have the, you have the ethnicity and so on, the age, and, and, and you can actually count it and you say, okay, we're going to measure, we're going to follow up and so on. That's That's one part. But we are not succeeding only through diversity, through counting how many women, how many men, how many of this origin and so on. We also need to make sure we have an inclusive culture where people come to work and they feel they belong. They feel respected and they feel heard. And in between here, as Abba was saying, we need to ensure that the structures are ensuring equity. So I think one very nice um, way of looking at it, almost like a metaphor, is... Um, if you, if you think about a football field and there is a fence and you have this tall person and you have this short person, if we put both of them in front of that fence, the short person cannot see. Let's put them in a chair so that person is equally high and can see the game. Like we do, for example, with accessibility to buildings. We need to have a way for people with wheelchair to get into the building. And that's the equity to ensure a structure where it's actually possible to, to uh, have the equal opportunities. So that's how I would define it and, and explain it. Oh, fantastic, that's helpful. Um, Parim, would you, would you say anything? Is, does that kind of cover that? Or, or yeah, I would definitely echo on what Sabah and Heidi yep. said. Great definitions. And I also want to acknowledge, by the way, great question, Leon, to start. And I'll tell you why, because I, I was reading a stat the other day that was saying that 55% of people are too scared to talk about diversity and inclusion in the workplace for fear of saying the wrong thing. That's something I see a lot in my workshops with my clients where when we even start talking about diversity and inclusion and the very basic definition, a lot of executives, leaders, managers are too scared to say the wrong thing. Like you said at the start, like, forgive me if I ask stupid questions because I don't really yeah. know too much. So I want to acknowledge we're all on the same boat. There is no, and I think sometimes I fear sometimes we live in a very self-righteous time where people feel they have to have the perfect wording and the perfect way of saying things on social media. Otherwise they're going to get, you know, lots of negative comments. You shouldn't say this, you shouldn't say that. So 
let's acknowledge we're all work in progress. There is no, no one is born being the perfect, you know, diversity and inclusion, like ambassador and advocate, right? We're all learning. So I want to start by acknowledging that this is great that you ask these questions because a lot of us are scared to talk about it. And the other thing I wanted to acknowledge that the actual definition, I think, of diversity and inclusion has actually evolved a lot, especially over the last few years. Like if you think 20 years ago, when we talked about diversity and inclusion in the workplace, like Heidi mentioned, it was very much about gender diversity, I believe. And then over the last few years, you know, with Black Lives Matter, the Me Too movement and other, you know, LGBT plus pride, etc. Nowadays, the definition is not just gender diversity or uh, uh, ethnic diversity, but also religious diversity, age diversity, disability, sexual orientation, neurodiversity. We even talk about introverts and extroverts. So it's acknowledging that in the workplace, we want to represent the wide range, range of individuals that are shaping today's society. That's the main thing. And when it comes to inclusion, it's a, again, it's a hard uh, it's a hard concept to, to define. I love Gartner's definition of inclusion. They say that uh, inclusion in the workplace can be measured by looking at a few things like fair treatment, integrating differences, decision making, psychological safety, which is one of my favorite topics, trust, belonging and diversity. So hopefully these concepts help, these definitions help our listeners understand a bit what we're talking about. Essentially, like Heidi said really well, I think we're trying to achieve an environment, a workplace where people feel like they belong, not just, you know, the visible diversity. I can see there are men and women and disabled individuals and, and people with different ethnic backgrounds. That's great. But we also want to make sure all those people feel so safe, psychological safe, that they can be fully included in decision making, etc. So that's sort of my take on it. And I'm simply echoing on what Sabah and Heidi said earlier, which I just think the definition has changed a little bit, which is a good thing.